Hey everybody, I am getting set up. Sorry I'm running a little bit late today. I wanted to set up a last minute giveaway. So I was like, oh no, quick, do that. So I'm about five minutes late. I'm sorry about that. But let me know please uh, how I sound in the audio and uh, we'll get going in just a sec. All righty, check it out, new background, new background, that's right, we're going green now. You see, I have been doing this thing where every month, sorry, there there is Phoebe hair in this live stream box for some reason. Hello everybody, happy Easter. Um, I've been doing this new thing where every single month we're I'm trying to do a different color so that throughout the year it slowly makes a rainbow that's kind of the idea um so this is april's color and happy easter everybody um yeah i i'm a little frazzled right now because i just drove back from la yesterday um so it, it was just like a long day of driving and i and then i got home and i finished the pattern for today and then i went to sleep so i'm like very blah, 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 blah. but i'm getting there i'm getting there you're giving me, I'm getting that energy. Wow. <laughs> hey everybody. So today we are crocheting, um, I'm gonna say it's an extraterrestrial bunny. Uh, or, or a UFB, an unidentified flying bunny. So we're making a UFO. This is the brand new pattern that just came out today. It looks like this, right? It's a little UFO, but what's really cool is this, uh, the window actually gets pushed back into the UFO like that and it creates a little a little seat for your alien alien and the alien can get can go ahead and sit in the seat and he sticks in there because of his little his little like wiggly wobblies and then he can fly around in his little UFO so this is what we're making today and I just finished the pattern yesterday so if you want to get the pattern, you can find it by just going to right there, clubcrochet.com slash UFO. It is a membership only pattern because it's in early access right now. So you have to have a membership to get it. But good news for you, memberships, uh, you can get a free trial for a membership, so you can get it for free. And then if you really want and you don't like your membership, you can cancel it at any time. Um, and it's their leftover dinner in the egg. Yes, we'll get to this giveaway in just a second as well. Um, so that's what we're crocheting today. Here's what you need for it if you want to crochet along with me. You'll need gray and, gray and white yarn. 
Um, I'm using worsted weight yarn and 100% cotton. I would highly suggest using something that is a little bit more malleable, like 100% cotton for this pattern because when you push the, the thing in, you want it to hold your character in place. And having something too loose, like a like a soft wool or something, probably won't hold it into place as well. So I, I suggest trying something that has a little bit more of a like a moldability. I say moldability, I don't know what the real word is for that, but yeah. Um, and then you'll need a third color. I'm using green for our alien. I might switch this to purple for our alien for Easter or like maybe like a pink for Easter. I think that might be kind of fun. So I might go grab some of that in just a second. Uh, but that's the, what you'll need for your yarn. And then for your crochet hook, I'm using a size G four millimeter crochet hook. I'm using a darning needle with a crimped end as I do. A pair of scissors and an easter egg no and a uh and some safety bead eyes i'm just using size eight millimeter safety bead eyes you just need one for the little center of that alien's eye um and what else i guess that's all you need um and next up how you can support this channel if you are yes is my finger okay i will explain this also in just a second um if you would like to support this channel, there's a few ways to do so. The first way, and probably the best way, is with a Club Crochet membership. Memberships start at only $5 a month. You can even get a free trial, and it gives you all the patterns that I make. So every single pattern is available as long as you got a membership to the website. You can even get monthly kits mailed directly to your door with all the materials that you need. Um, this month's kit was actually for this little alien, and it goes out tomorrow. Um, it is too late to sign up for this kit, though. Uh, the end of the signups was the end of the month, but the kits go out on the first Monday of the month, which is tomorrow. So it's too late to sign up for this kit, but next month's kit is really, really cool. We're doing an endangered species uh, crochet kit, and you're able to choose between three different endangered species, which we'll be talking about later in this month. Um, but for now, uh, yeah, it's, it's really cool. And your support for next month's kit, um, will go to the World Wild Wildlife Foundation. So we're doing like a big fundraiser as well. So yeah, it's more, it's more of like a, I mean, you obviously get a really cool crochet kit, cool crochet patterns. I'm trying to go above and beyond for, for this Earth Day. Um, I like to do really big crochet, uh, like, um, donations for Earth Day. I'm, I'm really into that. So yeah anyhow today we're making a ufo um oh other ways to support the channel are the way that tina just did and cooperlicious oh my gosh i didn't see that one either man i'm so bad at hearing the sound of the the doolily thing um thank you so much for your support if you would like to help support this channel the best way to do so is with a don or the best way is with a membership but another great way <laughs> is with a donation and you can donate straight straight to me by going to clubcrochet.com slash tip and it goes straight to this little bar here which is a huge uh giveaway game show that we make uh if this bar gets all filled up and i put something out just for you if you um so first off we got tina and tina for supporting you know we're doing space so and you're the first supporter so i'm gonna put out our little moon for you this is for you, Tina. Thank you so much. And this is gonna be out right here for the live stream. Just for you. And then for Cooperlicious, if you support for $5 or more, I'm gonna put out an alien for you or a monster. I used to do these things called Monster Mondays where I'd crochet a creature based on a an illustration. And so I have a bunch of different kinds of little monsters. I, I wanna get back into doing that soon. Um, I think this one's pretty good. I don't think I put this one out last time. It might get a little lost in the green background, but that's okay. This is the Antlered Hibigon. So this is out for you, Cooperlicious. Thank you so much for your support. He's going to go right back here. we got to give him something so that he can uh, sit up straight. Let's go with this little ball of yarn. We'll put that behind him. That way he can stand up a little bit easier. And we'll go ahead and put this alien to the side because we're going to make one anyhow. Put these to the side. Now let's talk about this here giveaway. That's right. We're doing a giveaway today. I figured, you know, it's Easter. And then I thought, oh my gosh, I need to do a giveaway last minute. So if you would like to win a free three-month membership to Club Crochet, 
enter to win this giveaway. All you gotta do is guess what crocheted object is in this Easter egg. And I'll open it up at the end of the live stream. And you can guess, there is a link in the description of this video. And um, you can guess there. Uh, quick hint, it is, a, it is a crochet pattern from the Club Crochet Library. Uh, and I'll try to give some more hints later on in this video too. So uh, the first one to guess it right wins uh, the free three month membership. So it's only the first one to get it right. It's a tough guess though. I have to say, I think it's gonna be tough, but the longer I get into the stream, the more hints I'll give away. So someone will win it. Someone will get it right because I'll end up giving a pretty good hint at the end. Um, okay. Uh, and thank you again, Cooperlicious, for, for the additional support uh, and to, to Tina as well. Okay, so I think that's everything right there. And I, oh, let me talk about this little finger situation here. So <laughs> there's a little finger sitting right here. So uh, I was being a dum dum on Friday and I was cutting wood with an ax to make a uh, fire and I cut myself pretty nasty right right here on the um on the little bendy part so i'm not crocheted yet with this finger thing so i don't know how bad it's going to be but we're going to hope and pray that it's not that bad not that bad um am i leaving the form closed on purpose until the end nope that was a goof that was definitely a goof is the form closed like you can't do it send Link, shorten URL, copy. The form is closed, huh? Let's go file, new incognito window, and let's check this form out. Ah, yes. Is no longer accepting, oh, I'm stupid. Okay, hold on, hold on. Oh, the phone. What did I do wrong? How do I say I'm accepting responses? Ah, I figured it out. Okay, try it now. Let's try it now. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it's working now. You do have to be signed in apparently to get it, but whatever. Um, okay, let me go grab some pink yarn. I actually don't think I need to go anywhere. I think I have some pink yarn right here. I don't. I don't. One second. It's right here. I'll keep talking. Don't go nowhere. Oh, no, please. Wait, do I have pink yarn? I want to see. Is that purple? No. Man. Day. Oh, here's the pink. Well, that's not really pink. Yeah, that's pink. Alright. We're going to try one of these guys. We're gonna hope this is enough yarn. I think it is though. Um, okay. Cause I wanna make a pink uh, alien today because I want to. <laughs> uh, yes, it's on autofocus, so it will zoom in and out all the time. Um, do I yarn over or yarn under? I do a yarn over. I don't, I don't like yarn unders um, because my pieces get too tiny and it uh it ends up hurting my hands after a while um i don't know i need to practice it a little bit more i'm actually working on i think it'd be really fun to do a tutorial for the difference between the two it feels like my screen is crooked but whatever no i don't call any yarn under <laughs> okay so What's really cool about this alien pattern, and the alien pattern is going to come out uh, for free sooner or later. Um, oh boy, yeah, this might this might be tough. I gotta try not to bend my finger too much as I crochet here. Um, what's really cool about this alien is that you don't need to sew anything on. It's it's a no sew pattern. One, two, three, four. Six and seven. 
<laughs> Melville has like no faith in me. I bet he calls it something wrong. No, I don't. I know the difference. And I've been practicing doing my yarn unders because I know people use them all the time and I wanted to do a little explainer video and I wanted to see what uh, how yarn unders affected other kinds of stitches too so I've been trying to do like a lot of my my little fancy stitches like doing the spiked bobble with the yarn under and doing half double crochets with the yarn unders to see how it affects different stitches and I will return with my research in a full video eventually um, by the way, in this video, I am not going to be teaching how to crochet this pattern. Uh, there is a full video tutorial and everything if you go to the pattern right here at clubcrochet.com slash UFO. Um, there's a video tutorial, a written tutorial, there's a downloadable PDF available, everything. So since I built all that, I'd rather just hang out and crochet with you today on our little Easter day. One, two, three, four, five. No, I don't think I ever said them backwards. Maybe. I mean, you know, you know how I am. I, I switch things up all the time. I'm, I'm not very consistent in my crochet speech. I don't know good word like things. I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> I have only had a part of my coffee for today, so you can tell I'm still. Uh, it's still like brewing in me. By the end of this stream, I'm going to be flying off the walls, though. There we go. So we're making the ears right now. What's neat is it's all done in the first row. Around. And there we go. We already got our ears made. There we go. It is definitely more difficult to crochet with a uh, band-aid that restricts my movement. Look, I can't, like... Uh, you have an echo of my voice. Hello, 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 hello. I'm an idiot. You're an idiot. <laughs> hey, remember our movie nights? We should get back to movie night soon. I was thinking uh, two things, actually. I, I am an actual coffee machine. Um, I was actually two, thinking two things recently um, that I want your guys' help and advice on. Um, the first thing is uh, I would really like to get back to doing movie nights again. So we need to talk about that. When should we do movie nights and what kind of movies we should watch and stuff like that. Um, so if you have any ideas, maybe for May we could do a movie night. Um, and then the other idea, the other thought was, well, and back to the movie night thing. I want to do it on a different day other than sun Sundays. I want to do it like on a, maybe like even a Friday night. That could be kind of fun. Um, I wouldn't do it too late on a Friday for me so that other, so it's other people's Friday nights. So maybe like Friday at, I don't know, five or 6 PM Pacific standard time. So my time. Um, so that's one idea. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. Uh, and yeah, if you have any thoughts about what to do for movie night. And then the other thought I was thinking was I really want to get back to doing Monster Mondays. I don't know if I really want them to be on Mondays because Monday is just a whole day for me because I have a day job. But a different day, Monster Tuesdays or Wednesdays, or maybe not calling them Monster Days, maybe call them Improv Days or something. Uh, but basically a crochet day where we do a live stream and on the live stream, we, um, I do, I either draw an illustration prior to the live stream or we get another artist, a friend of mine, to do an illustration of a different kind of monster. And then I crochet that monster live on video. So it could go really badly. It could go really well. Um, it's really fun because there's a lot of challenge that comes with crocheting a monster from scratch where I have to figure out like, ooh, how am I gonna make these kind of antlers or how am I gonna make these kind of eyes? So that part of it is really fun. But uh, yeah, I think 
that could be a really fun thing to get back into it. And another thing that I want to do with it is make it on a different day. Um, I think I'd only like to do it maybe once a month. But make it on a different day other than Sundays so that other people can crochet along with us. Because um, I just find that some people... I uh, can't make it on these Sundays, you know, the same day every every time. It's just a little bit, um, I think it's a little bit rough for some different uh, time zones. So I think I want to try doing another time zone for other people in different areas of the country or different areas of the world to crochet along with us. One, two, three, four. Change to white now. Yeah, I'm glad you think that would be a cool idea. Yeah, and I think just once a month would be nice because it wouldn't be like too much of a commitment for me um, to, to do an illustration. And like, you know, uh, clearly those are a lot of work. It takes a lot of um, thought process in the video to, to not only live stream, but also to improvise crocheting a pattern. But it would be a lot of fun. It'd be really cool. Oh yeah, Mika. Mika asks, is it difficult to crochet? No. I, I mean, here's the thing. Like everything, practice makes perfect. Um, I don't think that crocheting in and of itself is very difficult, especially amigurumi. I think it's relatively simple to crochet amigurumi as long as you have a pattern or, um, uh, yeah. But in the very beginning of it, yeah, it's going to be difficult like anything else. Like if you try to do a... Um, a cartwheel. I don't know how to do a cartwheel. To do a cartwheel right now, it'd be pretty difficult. But after I tried it a few times, I think it would get a lot easier. Just like crocheting. And if you have some help learning how to crochet, that helps a lot too. So if you want to check that, uh, learn how to crochet, there is a link that Melbell just put in the com comments for crocheting101.com. That's my free how to crochet series that teaches you everything that you need to know about how to crochet. And, oh, hey, hey, Phil, how you doing? How you doing, dude? Um, I finished your rhino. Check this out. So Sir Pro Gray is in the chat, and Sir Pro Gray is one of the amigurumi artists that is doing the, um, the give or the, the endangered species crochet patterns, and one, and his pattern is for this rhino. Which is so cute. Look how cute this little dude is. Look at his little feet. Last live stream I showed you it like almost finished crocheting. But this one is finally finished. And I just think it's so cute. I love it. My mom was obsessed with it. I showed her this uh, week it. And she was like, oh my god, can I have it? And I was like, no. <laughs> you can have one maybe later after I make a few of them. But you can't have the first one. I need that to do a pattern for it. <laughs> so that's one of the patterns this um, that's coming out for Earth Day. It is awesome, dude. You kicked butt on it. I am really impressed with your pattern. Like, very, very much so. I want to figure out... Um, I really need to figure out my own pattern. I'm thinking of doing a sloth. I keep changing my mind. I started by doing a sea turtle, but then I saw your sea turtle pattern, and I was like, oh my god, this is such a good sea turtle. <laughs> I don't want to crochet a sea turtle anymore. And so now I'm thinking of doing a sloth, because I have some really cool fuzzy brown yarn that's great for, um, I think it'd be really good for kits, and I have a really cool idea to use magnets in the arms for it. But I haven't really had much time to practice and make it yet, because it's just been a busy... Uh, March. March was crazy busy for me. I don't know about you guys. It was really busy. Yeah, it even has a little tiny tail. And what's great about the rhino pattern, too, is it has a very limited amount of sewing. You have to sew on the horns and the feet, but the ears and the tail and stuff are all made um, within the body, which, which is really cool. Yeah, I... You, you know what? You did a great job, though, my friend. You did a really good job at reducing the amount of sewing, and I really appreciate that, too. Because um, you know I'm not a huge fan of sewing things together. 
but I think it's great. And I love there, there's a special stitch in the feet of that Rhino pattern. They use a stitch called a bean stitch. And I am obsessed with the bean stitch now. I love it. I'm going to use it all the time. Never heard of it, never done it before, but now I, I will be using it. I feel like I messed up where that eye went, but whatever. We might have a, we might have a little pink bunny alien. What should we call this? Bunny alien. A balian. Hey, I heard. I heard that one. Sasha, thank you so much. Happy Easter to you as well. Thank you for, so much for your support. And I got something special crochet for you to put out. Check this dude out. I was waiting. I was waiting just for you, Sasha. I don't know what this guy's name was, but I think this might have been my favorite Monster Monday crochet pattern that I did. Boom. Check this dude out. He's got this little funny little goatee. He's got this really crazy neck. Th this yarn is crazy fuzzy. It's like so furry. Norm I think I forgot to put nickels in him when I made him. This was a time when I didn't use nickels for crochet patterns. So he's gonna go like right here. It was weird, I think I did his head upside down. I did. So it started down there and I ended up here and I did this lip. I, I just love it. I'm so proud of that, that pattern. Just goes to show what we can do for Monster Mondays once we get back into them. Put that right here. And why don't we do a hint for our egg too. So let's see, what do we got so far? We got. The only hint I've given is that it's a crochet pattern from the Club Crochet Library. It's obviously, clearly it's tiny because it fits in this egg. Um, it, it's normal size that it is finished crocheting fits in this egg, so that helps. Um, ooh, ooh, how about this? It's used to being in small spaces. It's very used to being in condensed small spaces just like this one. That's a that's a pretty good hint. Um, that's gonna make a lot of sense at the end when I show you it. You're gonna be like, oh, I see what he meant. Or someone maybe is like, oh, I know, I know. Thank you, Melville. Melville, you're kicking butt. I do wish I was going to an Easter egg hunt. I love Easter egg hunts. My family, uh, used to be really into doing Easter egg hunts every Easter. Um, my dad is still doing one. And the basic uh, thing that we did was, I mean, there was like, you know, the basics of Easter egg hunts. There was eggs everywhere, candy everywhere that you just go collect. But there were also money eggs all over. Yes, I am actually doing the UFB. Yeah, <laughs> Re. Um, yeah, I just thought it was such a cute idea. Uh, it is, yeah, it's gonna be a bunny. It's gonna be an alien bunny. A balian, no. A bunlian, no. I don't know, we need to think of a name for it. Um, so he, he used to do this thing. Oh, hey, my dad's actually in the chat right now. Hi, dad. He used to do this thing every Easter where we do this really crazy um, uh, Easter egg hunt and he'd hide money eggs everywhere too. So I don't remember how much, um, how many of the money eggs there were, but there were only a few. It was only like five probably big money eggs. And the biggest money egg was like a bunch of money. I think the hundred bucks maybe for an egg. And he'd hide them really, really well. Sometimes no one would find them. Um, I remember some of the, some of the best places he hid them. One time he dug a hole in the grass and he took that grass out. He hid the egg into that grass and then he put the grass back in. I don't even know if anybody ever found that one. Basically, he just buried an, an egg in the ground and hid it there. Um, another great one was one time he took an orange and he cut the orange in half really delicately and then put an orange Easter egg in the orange this was all while it was still attached to the orange tree that we had in the backyard. And then he um, he put the orange back together so it didn't even look like the orange was cut open. I, I, I don't even know if anybody ever found that one. That one was so well done. Really impressive. Emily, oh my gosh, Emily, thank you so much. 
Oh, yes. You know what? I did see your email about that, Emily. Um, let me get back to you right after this uh, for that because... Yeah, that's clearly a mistake in the pattern. So what Emily's saying, if you are not watching this live, is that um, one of my patterns, the video tutorial, takes you to the wrong place. And I can't believe I have never noticed that until now. I'm so sorry. I will fix that right after this live stream for you. Um, it's just the wrong link. That's just the what it comes down to. The wrong link. And I'm sorry about that. Um, oh, and we got to put something up for Emily. Emily! Okay. Well, thank you so much for your support. Especially, thank you so much for your support. Even though, like, I made a mistake in a pattern. Like, that's really cool. <laughs> thank you. Um, okay. Ooh, I got something good. I got something good. Hi. You want to say hello? Thank you. Jules is here, and she wants to say hi. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. I come bearing bunnies and eggs. Oh. <laughs> in case you run out of little figures, I thought hey, it'd be cute for Easter eggs. I'm yeah, doing a giveaway Easter egg. Oh my gosh. Out here? Uh-huh. And uh, they have to guess what's in the what's in the egg. You don't know what's in it either. I have no idea what is in the egg. Do you want to guess? Yes. I'll, I'll give you a hint. Okay. Okay, so this, I'll give you the hints that I gave them, and maybe I'll give you an extra one too, so everybody gets an extra hint. Okay. So, oh wait, first off. Hi, Jane. This is for you, Emily. This is another monster that I created. Uh, I don't know what his name is. Emily, you get to name him. What is his, what's his name? Holy cow. I'm sure he has a name, but now he's going to have a new I'm one. I'm barely on camera. Here we go. Hi. No, I'm all we got to make sure that the egg. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Sasha. Hi, Hi everybody. Big. Is that Bobby? Yeah. That's Bobby. Yeah, that's my dad. Oh, my gosh. He stands up on his own. That's great. Oh, it's a he? Or she. Emily gets to decide. They. They. So Whatever they want. Buzz. There we go. And then we'll put... We'll put this right What here. was the hint for the egg? Okay, so the hints for the egg is, first off, it's a crochet pattern from the Faux Crochet Library. It's small okay. enough to fit in there, and it's right. really used to being in uh, small, condensed spaces just like that. Hmm, just like that, but not necessarily that. Not that, but similar. Oh, small, condensed space, and it's a pattern. I really got to think about this. Um, I can give you another hint. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Um, it's... Hi, Bobby. Um, Double Bobby. <laughs> uh, Don't want to make it too obvious. No, no, I know. This is what happens when Louis gives me hints on things. The first one is like, what? And then the second one is like, oh, duh. <laughs> yeah. Um, man, it's hard to not give too easy of hints. I haven't even finished the first item yet. People... Uh, what could I say? It's... I don't know. What could you say? Wow, South Africa. Hi, Amber. Oh, hey, South Africa. Wow. Uh, da, 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 da. It is... Oh, no, that's how too about easy. I ask, how about I ask a question? Okay, that's can't, good. Can it fly? <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a complicated answer, though. Oh. <laughs> There's a complicated answer to that. The, okay. the 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 answer to that is no. It cannot fly. It cannot fly. Right now. Right now. But theoretically, if it was not in there, it no. could fly? No. It cannot fly right now. All right. I have a guess. But I don't even know if this is a pattern of yours. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably wrong. I'm going to say, like, a caterpillar. Oh, because that it eventually is, turns okay. into something that can fly. Mm -hmm. I totally. But you I'm know wrong, what? You I? know what? You're not right. But, <laughs> but honestly, that was a good really, answer. really good answer, and and you are on the right track. All so, right. I'm not gonna guess anymore. I don't yeah, give it she away. is on the right track. I am on in, the right in track. In a very specific way. You're adorable. Happy Easter, everyone. Bye. She's gonna go continually watch a weird. No, crime shows. Oh, okay. She's playing Bunny Animal Crossing day. now. Oh, it's Bunny Day in Animal Crossing. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys knew about Bunny Day, but um, in Animal Crossing, there's a day called Bunny Day where you have this creepy bunny that hops around and everything is has eggs everywhere. I don't know. I don't. I did not like Bunny Day last year for Animal Crossing personally. Ooh, Sasha thinks that she might have got it right. Sa 
she thinks she might have actually got it right. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Oh! Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. Interesting. This is very interesting. Wait, how do I go back? There we go. Wow. We might have to do more than one person winning this. Um, <laughs> yes, Animal Crossing. I did not like Bloody Day. Not a big fan of it. I'll tell you what, if you get it, if you get it right, um, I feel like, okay, here, here's this, here's the situation, guys. I'm just going to be honest with you. Uh, two people have already gotten it right, which is wild because the hints, oh, wow. Actually, now a lot of people are getting it right. <laughs> wow, really? My hints were not that, Really? I'm really impressed by you guys. Okay, I'll tell you what. The first person that got it right is gonna get the three month membership. Anybody that got it right after that, I'm going to give um, a, a, a coupon to the Club Crochet Library so you can get a free pattern. That seems fair? That seems fair. If you get it right after the first one, just because I'm really impressed by the people that got uh, it right after that. Um, but I'm not gonna give any more hints and I'm also going to open it in the halftime show. I don't have anything else to do during the halftime show. So don't look for anything that I've crocheted or anything like that. I'm just gonna use the halftime show after I make the top of our um, UFO. I will show you what's in that egg there. I am really, really impressed by uh, the people that got it right. It's, I'm very, very impressed by that. No, no more hints. No more hints. I'm, clearly, I've given enough hints and when this many people are getting it right. Um, okay. Oh, you guys, my dad just looked at a, went to go look at a puppy for my aunt, a beagle. We used to love, so we used to have a beagle named um, Maddie. Oh, Maddie, she was the best puppy ever. Such a good dog. And my aunt also had a dog, a, a beagle named Snoopy. Um, and both of those, both of those beagles sadly passed. But a new beagle for, oh, that sounds great. I bet she's going to love that. I love beagles. We have a beagle that lives next door. That's really, really sweet. Okay, let's get back to where we're at here. Um, and where was I? <laughs> uh, okay, we gotta add the eye now. So let's see, where do we wanna add the eye? Do we want the eye to be pointing up or down or left or right or right in the center? Let's do it right in the center. I like it right in the center because, or making it slightly pointed up. Let's see, we'll, we'll look at both of them, both options. So first we'll do slightly looking up which is going to be right here. Which I kind of like that because it it's it's like hello. It looks like shy, like timid. So I like that one and or we could do it a little bit further down, which is where this one is. Let me know what do you think? Looking up or looking straight? Let me know in the comments. And Phil already finished the alien. Wow. Impressive, impressive. Right in the center to stare into your soul. That's what Aquatic Luna says. Center, oh, we got two centers. Okay. Here, I'll tell you what, I'll keep crocheting. I'm gonna start doing the, um, the frill along the side. Okay, we got three ups. 
three okay so three people said staying straight three people said pointing up you guys let me know okay center up 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 okay there's three more ups and only one more center The color changes are really tough in this pattern, Jane. I totally hear that. All right, I think we're going, I think up is gonna win here. Center, oh, two more centers. Whoa, you're trying to make a duffel bag right now, Jay Parker? That, uh, my, my tip for making a duffel bag is uh, be patient, I guess. I've never made a duffel bag before. That seems crazy to crochet a duffel bag. Pointing out, it looks like up is going to be the winner here. I'll keep going though, just in case. But yeah, duffel bag. I've never even heard of anybody crocheting a duffel bag. Seems so interesting. Center. <laughs> Jane, it's weird hearing two of me at the same time. Not for me. You should hear how many Louis are in my brain. They're all going like, hey, do this, do that. Hey, man, your nose looks great today. Yeah, I agree. They all sound different. But they're all Louis. Except for except for Antonio. That guy, I don't know how he got in there. But he has made his home in my brain. And he's not bad, he's a good neighbor. Wow, getting a lot of centers now. A few more get, a few more. You saw a crochet duffel bag. Wow, you, dude, you're wild, man. That is a lot to make. That is like, it seems like quite an investment, but pretty fun. Like what a fun, unique thing to have. And you saw a picture of it on Pinterest. I'll have to check that out later. Actually, if you want um, uh, to tag me in one, I'll see it that way because I'd like, I'd really like to see what that looks like. <laughs> Jane's like, I don't even care what the pattern said. I'm going to make it look right anyhow. Well, Jane, I would uh, very much like to make the pattern work best for you, too. So if you have any comments on this pattern, um, please let me know. I would like to make it the best pattern as possible. So... See, never you, yeah. Well, making a blanket in time. Okay, so it looks like I think they're that up one by just, just a smidge, and I'm voting up too, to be honest. Um, but it did seem like a lot of people were saying up, so I'm gonna make a point it up, like that. Which is cute. You're right. It is like a nice. Um, so are you are you gonna tag me on Pinterest or on Instagram? If it's on Pinterest, I think you can just comment on it and put like at Club Crochet, or you can also email me it. My email is just Louis at clubcrochet.com. Or if you're on Instagram, you could tag me by just putting at club.crochet. There's a few different options there. So we got our eye in place. Now we're just gonna make the uh, I'm just going to close them up. Can anyone confirm the odd boxes on page four of the PDF or just me? So what I did with those boxes on page four is that they you can open and close them. Um, I actually think it's really cool. This is the first time or the second time I've ever done that. Uh, let me know what you think about that. There, it's like these boxes that you can like, they're just like extra helpful tips that you can close and open. Because I wanted to make it so you could, uh, because some of the tips are already mentioned earlier in the pattern. So I was like, uh, I don't think you need to see these tips again, but it might be useful if you're only on this page. 
I don't know. What do you think about those? Anybody that's looking at the PDF version of this pattern. Yeah, maybe I should do... Hey, Jane, what do you think about me using my little color change chart uh, for the for the color changes on the alien instead? I could always try that out. I mean, it might take a little bit more time, though. Jane says, probably just leave them there. Yeah. How do you fit an elephant in a fridge? Hmm. How do you fit an elephant into a fridge? Hmm. You. I don't know. I don't know. Is that a riddle? Is it more of a riddle or a joke? I gave up one punch man. How do you fit an elephant into a fridge? I am very curious. I'm looking for for the best technique. Because you know, there's often times when you got to fit an elephant into a fridge. You got to be ready for that, you know? Who knows when you're going to need to put an elephant into a fridge? Oh, Jane, you haven't tried the color change chart? Yeah, try the try the earth pattern. I really think that the color change chart um, is a is a fun pattern to make because of the color change chart. It's a very, um, I don't know. I just think it's fun. It's because it's just unlike any other crochet pattern I've done personally. You open the door. Oh, Claire says that you open the door, put the elephant in, and then close it. I mean, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Have a small elephant. Wait, did I put the thing on it? Yeah, I did. Okay. Oh, hello from Cancun, Mexico. Hello, Anne. Wow. Hello. So far away. Someone, someone's in South Africa. Someone in Mexico. That's isn't that crazy? Oh my gosh, that's a silly answer. <laughs> Sometimes the answer is right in front of your face. Put the elephant in and close the door. <laughs> you guys are dorks. <laughs> what sounds like a sneeze and is made of leather? Pl um, a chew. Um, oh man, I'm not good at riddles. Uh, sounds like a sneeze is made of leather. Phil's doing a stretch break. Break now that Phil's like so far ahead of me in this pattern right now. He's like, he's like oh, oh yeah, no problem. Let's see if I can crack my neck. Ready? Here we go. Here we go. One one time per episode, I try to do this. It's, it's like a it's like a toss up. I might kill myself this episode. Here we go. A shoe. A shoe is made of leather. It sounds like a sneeze. That's really... I like that one, actually. I really like that. That's a good... That's a good... Uh, that's a good one. A shoe. Yeah, that's a, that's a little clever. That's a clever one. Yeah, I'm doing a little bit of ASMR for all you, all you, I wanted to call you crackheads. <laughs> cool. Thank you so much, Jay. Jay Parker. I'll check that out uh, after the stream. I'm very interested in seeing a duffel bag crocheted. Watch me be like, oh my god, this is so cool, I'm going to make one, and then obsess over it for like a week and a half. 
Hi, Claire. What starts with W? Starts with a W and with a T. I almost said something naughty. Um, Twitch. You have a single eye, but cannot see. What am I? A, uh, a needle. Is it a needle? Single eye, but can't see? That's not bad. That's a good guess. Yeah, I think it's a good guess. Hey, look at that. We had enough pink. We got our alien. We got a alien. Our bunny alien. Our alien bunny. What would you call that? A but bu bunny in. Oh, a bunley in. I like that. Oh, what starts with the W and ends with the T. <laughs> Is it what? Oh, oh, I get it. What starts with a W and ends with T. Ha ha ha. Hey, I got it right. I got the uh, the I riddle right. I'm a genius. People tell me all the time. They say... <sighs> okay, so... I have to preface this joke because I told my brother this joke and he did not think it was funny. But I came up with this funny joke where I go, um, I go like, oh my gosh, I'm such a good singer. Pe people tell me all the time. They say, what are you doing in my house? Get out of here. How did you get in here? Such a good singer. <laughs> I'm such a good singer. People tell me all the time, please, here, take all my money. Just don't hurt my child. <laughs> I think I have a very, very, very specific sense of humor for that joke. <laughs> I think it's funny as heck, but Taylor was like, I don't get it. It's my brother's name. <laughs> extra, extra bunestrial. That's not bad. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I think you're, I think we're, we're getting closer. Or, or we could go with rabbit. We could start working with rabbit. Rabbit. Hmm. Five. Six. Okay, so now I'm on the uh, top of our UFO. The UFO is made into two parts. Um, and I do some like fancy footwork in one of the parts to make it so that you can um, invert it really easily and it can keep its shape and hold your little bunny in there or or alien whatever you decide to do rebellion oh that's close a rebellion oh my god I'm so good at riddles people tell me all the time they say they say, who are you? How did you get in here? All the time I hear that. I'm so good at riddles. <laughs> Such a bad joke. But I love it. I think it's hilarious. A little bit. <laughs> Tina's, Tina's idea for the name is Rab... B. Cobb Super Monster. Oh, I don't know about that one. <laughs> what word in the dictionary is hilarious? Is it hilarious? Does anybody get else get annoyed with wool or is it just me? Asks Rebecca. Uh, I mean, I get annoyed with it when it, when it gets really tangled. Then I definitely get annoyed with uh, with yarn just in general. But wool specifically, hmm. I don't usually get too annoyed with wool. It gets a little itchy, I suppose, sometimes. Extra bit terrestrial, man. There's something there. I'm telling you, we're we're getting there. Oh my God, Jane. Jane's right. Okay, so. Uh, One Punch Man gave us another riddle. 
after his uh, how do you put an elephant in the fridge riddle, which the answer to the elephant in the fridge was you put the elephant in the fridge and you close the door. Uh, and then he said, how do you put a giraffe in the fridge in four steps? Jane answered totally correctly. I'm sure it's correct. Open the fridge, take out the elephant, put in the giraffe, close the fridge. It's a good answer. It's a good answer. I second Jane's answer. <laughs> Rebecca's like, Rebecca just yeeted her, her wool. She was like, uh-uh. Nature can have this. I don't need it no mo. <laughs> what is the rabbit? Um, you ever seen uh what is that movie? Um, like Wallace there's a Wallace and Gromit movie where there's an alien from outer space, but it looks like a bunny. Maybe we could steal that that bunny's name. Ooh, okay. The rebellion in its HOP. Hovering orbit pouncer. I like I like where you're going with that. Cotton Cottonalien, Cottonalien, Cottonalien. That's not bad also. I really like the idea that his UFO is called like a HOP. I think that's really funny. Hovering orbital. Hmm. Hovering orbital. <laughs> the curse of the were rabbit. That's the one. Yeah, a were rabbit. That's a good. I like. I like those movies a lot, actually. I really like stop motion. So I like. I like uh, pretty much anything Wallace and Gromit is does because of all the stop motion. I mean, honestly, the story doesn't even need to be that good, and I love it because of the cool stop motion. I just think it's so impressive. When I see a stop motion movie or TV show, I'm like. This took so much effort, and it looks so good. Have you, ever, you guys ever seen Kipo and the Two Strings or Three Strings or something? Man, that movie is so impressive. It's insane. I highly, highly suggest anybody check out that movie. And just while you're watching it, acknowledge the fact that these are all just pictures of a real object in the world. It's just every single frame is a different picture of an object. It's like, what? How did they do that, you know? It's really impressive. Okay. It was the king of the jungle's birthday party, and all the animals showed up except for one. Which animal did not come? Hmm. I think it's like maybe a, maybe the maybe it is the lion for some reason. Or man, I need more coffee for your riddles. One punch man. Are you really are you the real one punch man? I know, right Bill? The the Kipa one, uh, it's like I don't even know how it's even possible. Just the art form, the like the ability to do that with their art, it's just so impressive. <laughs> Oh my god, that's really funny. I hope it's Claire's answer to your riddle, One Punch Man. I hope the answer is the giraffe because it's in the fridge. Because that's hilarious. That is, that's actually a really funny... That's really good. Phil, great question. I can answer that question really well. Uh, Phil said, how do you keep count when you're not even looking at it? Um, I do this thing when I crochet where I just pay a lot of attention to where the increases are and decreases are in my pattern to tell where the end of the round is. 
So, um, I mean, at this point, I've just done it like as a, it's just like a reflex now. I don't really control that impulse, but uh, it did take practice to get there. Um, but yeah, the basic gist is I just, um, I spend a lot of time looking at where increases are and where decreases are. If you look at the top of this pattern here, it might be kind of hard to see. Let's go ahead and let's try um, zooming in. Boom, baby. Okay, check this out. Check this out. Actually, it might be easier to show on on our little alien here. I'm going to hold it upside down because that's how we're crocheting it. But if you look at the um, the pattern, uh, it's very easy. or it, it gets easier, but to tell where the increases are and the decreases are. So this is, or this is just a regular single crochet right here. Just one V and into one spot, right? Well, under it right here, that's an increase. There's two Vs going into one spot. So what I do when I crochet, sorry about my weird fingers, I'm gonna hide them. So what I do when I crochet is I just keep going around and look where the last increase is. And I know roughly that, um, that where the last increase is usually, but once I know where the last one is, I know that's the end of the pattern. Uh, and if I don't know if that's the last one, I just keep looking and follow that row. So if this, this, this is an increase, right? Cause there's a V and a V two of them in one spot. Once I find that, and if I follow, oh, there's not one right there, which means that must be the last one. And there's the one right before it. So that's how I crochet without uh, having to read a pattern, having to um, pay too much attention to my crochet or keep count. I just do that. I hope that was helpful. Oh, I'm sorry. What was the answer? Was it giraffe? Yeah, the giraffe. That's a hilarious. I love that. I love that. I'm going to totally steal those jokes. Okay, so just just to reiterate for people that are just tuning in. Um, the first the first riddle was how do you put an elephant? How do you fit an elephant in the fridge or how do you put an elephant in the fridge? And the answer was you put the elephant in the fridge and you close the door. <laughs> so, such a stupid riddle. And then, <laughs> and then the second one was, how do you put a giraffe in a fridge in four easy steps? Step one, you open the fridge. Step two, you take the elephant out of the fridge. Step three, you put the giraffe in the fridge. And step four, you close the fridge door. And then the last one was, uh, it's the king king of the jungle's birthday and all the animals are there to celebrate his birthday except for one which animal didn't go and the answer is the giraffe because he was in the fridge <laughs> so good so good totally up my alley of of silly dumb jokes I love it Bill said that's like the joke with the brick. What's the joke with the brick? Ooh, BB says, any tips for crocheting stuff for a baby? Hmm. Well, I don't have a baby, but I do make a lot of baby things because I just like cute miniature amigurumi stuff. So I can give you a few tips. Um. Let's see. The first tip is don't crochet anything too tiny. You don't want that kid to, to swallow it. Um, a great t another tip is uh, depends on how old the baby is. But if it's like a baby baby, you might want to avoid using safety bead eyes unless you're very confident that that safety bead eye will not be removed. Um, it is really hard to remove safety bead eyes, uh, at least the ones that I use. It's just crazy difficult to get them off. So I'm not too uncomfortable about giving them to a baby, but if you have any inclination at all and you're worried about it at all, I suggest probably using a, um, a bullion knot instead of a safety eye uh, because it's just fabric. So even if it, they do remove it, it's not that big of a deal. Um, whereas, you know, a safety eye, if a little baby swallows that, it could do some real damage. So that's probably not a bad tip. Use bullion knots. They're also called, um, I think, the rose knot. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. There's a lot of tutorials online too about how to make those. Um, 
Yeah, I think those are probably the best tips I got. Uh, and just don't crochet anything too small. Like my miniature stars, those are a little too tiny. A little too itty bitty. What yarn am I using? I am using worsted weight cotton yarn. Um, it's 100% cotton uh, and worsted weight size. The yarn I'm currently using is Lily Sugar and Cream. I like Lily Sugar and Cream a lot. I think they make really good yarn uh, and have a lot of different colors. I really like using 100% cotton because of the, I say it's the moldability factor. I know that's not, that doesn't really make any sense, but it's really the answer that I have. Um, the, the ability to like, for it to hold its shape uh, is really nice for, for amigurumi. So I really like that out of my cotton yarn. Um, and I really like Lily Sugar and Cream because they have so many different kinds, different colors, and uh, and it's relatively affordable. I think it's a good yarn. Okay, where am I? One, two, and increase. All right. Yes, that's actually how I got into it, Jay Parker, was I started by crocheting baby hats um, with uh, Lily Sugar and Cream. Yeah, That's actually how I started crocheting in general, was I, I would make a lot of hats. I made a lot of baby hats. Um, I used to make ones that looked like, um, like the mouth of a dinosaur was on top of your head. I really loved those patterns. I should really just get back into that soon. I think they'd be a good addition to the website. Uh, yes, that's a great tip, Anne. Anne said, um, Anne says that in her experience making things for a baby, it has to be easy uh, care because new parents don't have the patience or energy to hand wash a knit slash crocheted item. And I think that is a really, really good tip. Uh, something that you can just throw into the wash is super important for a baby. So probably something that's a uh, super wash yarn would probably be good. Um, or or just knowing that like it's not a big deal if it gets messy like that's why Amy Groomy is great because you can just throw these into the wash I don't think it'll you know be too big of a deal you might lose an eye if you're too uncareful but yeah that's a really good tip oh my gosh Miriam I know right over a hundred, not only over a hundred thousand subscribers, but a hundred and two thousand already. And I haven't even done the the hundred thousand subscriber like video yet. Um, just because I've been like crazy busy. Uh, but the the play button is on its way. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so like stupidly excited for that. But of course, I'm gonna show you it out. Show you it when I get it. Yeah, it was really fun. I really like those dinosaur hat mouths. Um, I have one somewhere. Uh, yeah, I used to really like those patterns a lot. And I, I should get back into them. Oh, no, Aquatic Luna. Okay, well, thank you. I, I need that kind of feedback. So Aquatic Luna said um, she made a T-Rex and her son dipped him in cheese a few months ago at a Mexican restaurant and now to this day he, she can't get it back to its original condition. I think, I don't know if this is a really great tip or not, but a personal tip is making something that you're comfortable with it getting destroyed if it's for a baby. I mean, I think T-Rex is a great pattern because you can remake it and it only will take you like an hour or so to remake eventually. So it's not like the biggest time commitment. It's not like you spent like six hours making this little thing for a baby and then they just go and destroy it. Um, yeah, I think that's actually probably a pretty good tip. Miriam likes him. Oh, wow, a lot of people like the music. Thanks. I like the music too. I think it's perfect like space music. 
Hey, Sarah. Well, thank you for coming in general. I appreciate you joining the live stream and I hope, uh, I hope you enjoyed as well. Hey, also, if you like this video, prove it. <laughs> like it down below. Um, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed um, and like the video. Liking the video helps me know what kind of videos I should keep making and what kind of, uh, um, yeah. And, and also just helps spread these videos out to other people. So yeah, if you like it, like it down below. Uh-oh, my iPad's running out of batteries. So I probably need to plug it in just a second. So let me finish this real quick. And uh, I will figure out this plugging in my iPad situation. Yeah, see Aquatic Luna? Exactly that. You, he's not allowed to use the teddy bear out of the house that took you a week to make. Exactly. That's why you want to just make something small, easy, and quick. That only takes you an hour or so to make. Hence, like any of the club crochet patterns. <laughs> I really like making patterns that I can do in one sitting. I'm a big proponent of that. Um, just going from like having nothing to something, it, it just feels really nice to do in one sitting. I mean, of course, I do like doing big projects that take a lot of time, uh, but, you know, there's something about that that sitting down and making something, being done with it, really feel, feels great. Oh, I know the answer to that. One Punch Man says, an adventurer wants to go back home, but to get across the river he needs to swim through a crocodile infested river to get home he swam across the river but no crocodiles attacked him why it's because they're all at the party for the king of the jungle doi oh oh okay yeah yeah bill bill great 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 tip bill says Try to watch the videos as close as to when they get posted as possible. It helps feed the YouTube algorithm, and that is true. Um, so hit that bell button. If you hit the bell icon down below, it'll notify you right when a video of mine comes out. Just check it out. Hit that like button real quick. You don't even have to watch it at that point. But it does help the, the algorithm know that, like, hey, this guy's videos are good. We should su suggest them to other people, too. Yeah, I was right. I was right about the riddle. That's great. Okay, so I think I'm done with the top here. One, two, oh no, I got one more, one more repeat, and then we're done. And we'll show you what's in that egg, and uh, I will plug my iPad in, and then we'll work on the bottom, and then we'll keep going from there. Maybe I should plug the iPod in before I show you what's in the egg. Okay, I'll review my. Let's review the hints and give everybody a few. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm not dying. I'm fine. Okay, so here's the deal, y'all. We got this Easter egg here. Someone already guessed what, what it was right. The first person that got it right will win the three month membership to Club Crochet, and that's already happened. So sorry, but if you still guess it right, before I show you what's in it, in the next few seconds, few minutes, um, I will give you a free pattern to the Club Crochet Library. So you can get a free pattern. So you just gotta guess it right. Now, um, um, individual, Let's refresh that. There actually hasn't been any more guesses too. So um, we still got a few more guesses to go with uh, and it's also just nice to have it to, to guess it right so here are the hints that I have so far first off first hint is it's a pattern from the club crochet library it's tiny uh, it's a tiny pattern um, and it's used to being in con in small spaces just like this one not this one exactly but similar to it um, it is uh, uh oh and and Jules's guess was that it's a caterpillar 
because oh oh I, I give her a hint that um she asked if it can fly and I said not right now but eventually it could fly and then she guessed a caterpillar because it turns into a butterfly and I told her no but you're on the right track right idea so go ahead and guess real quick I'm gonna go ahead and plug my iPad in while you're guessing uh, Mel Bell just put the the thing in the description of this video so if you want to guess that's where to do so and I'll just be one second I got my charger right here do I have my charger here Wrong charger. A chicken. Ooh, that's a, that's a good guess. Ow. Ow, I hit my head. That's fine. Who needs a head anyhow? Okay. A lot of, a lot of guesses for burbs. Okay. I'm going to... Uh, let me take a sip of coffee real quick. Let's see, do we got any more? No one's even guessed since I even just said, hey, go guess again. You gotta guess in the in the link that Mel Bell provided. Uh, that's also in the description of this video. So you gotta go there to guess, because it's a Google form. And I'll show you what's in there. Just a sec. Let's see, how we doing? Okay. All right, I'm gonna turn off accepting responses. Are you guys ready? Claire, can you do it twice? No, you can't guess twice. It'll only take one guess. So only got, you, only, you got one. Do not, wait. You only got one shot. Wait. How does that song go? You got one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. You better put yourself in the mood. I, I, I can't remember the rest of it. But you know what I'm singing. Yes, it's a vaccine to COVID. But it's the AstraZeneca one. <laughs> All right. Guesses are not being accepted in three, two, one. Boom. No more guesses accepted. And the answer is. Drum roll, please. There's his butt. Da 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 da. It's a Charmander. It's if the Pokemon Charmander is the answer to the question. And now you see uh, why it was hard for me to give too many guesses in. So, yes, it's small enough to fit in that, uh, into the thing. It is a club crochet pattern. It's one of the first club crochet patterns I ever came out with. Um, it is itty bitty. Uh, it can fly eventually because it turns into Charizard, which is a fire flying type. Pokemon. Um, let's see. What else? I wanted to say something that, like, it's hot or it, it's uh, warm or, or something like that, but I thought, oh, that's really going to give it away. Yeah. The form closed. Yep, the form. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, I just showed you what it was. <laughs> and the winner, the winner of the giveaway, I can't believe that this person guessed it so quick. They guessed it within, like, Honestly, it was it was crazy fast. So um, let's see, individual. Let's go to it. Winner was right there. Yes, it was within like seriously, the first five guesses they got it right. So Miriam, Miriam is the winner. Congratulations, Miriam! I will be giving you a free uh, three month membership to Club Crochet. So congratulations. I see you in there, Miriam. Uh, and the uh, what's crazy is that uh, Sasha answered it correctly right after Miriam. You were off by like 
seriously, must have been like a 10 seconds and you missed it by. So congratulations, Miriam. Yes, you are there in the chat. Hello, Miriam. Congratulations. I'll email you after this with uh, how to get your free three month membership. And to everybody else that's got that got it correct, um, but weren't the first ones, I'll send you a coupon code so you can get a free pattern to the Club Crochet Library after this. And we'll set this guy out right out here. This is this. Congratulations, Miriam. He's gonna be out here congratulating you. And maybe by the end of the live stream, he'll evolve. We'll see. We need to train him a little bit more though, I think. There were, I think, four or five people that got it right. So congratulations, everybody that got it. And let's go ahead and we can hide this now. Give us a little bit more room. Actually, let's put this guy here. He needs a little bit more space. He's just a big, he's a big boy. He's a big boy. He'll have, he'll have his little Charmander friend. Just like that. Just like that. There we go. Give these guys a little bit more space. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. There we go. All right, let's keep on keeping on. Balloon was not a bad guess. That is a good guess. I think that was a great guess. Yeah, there were a lot of good ones in there. I was like, oh man, that's good. The bat, a lot of people, or a few people guessed bat. And that was a really good guess as well. We'll have to do, I want to do those giveaways way more often, more, more like every episode. Or every live stream, rather. Let's make sure I'm char my iPad is charging. Yeah. It was fun. I agree. I think that was a lot of fun. So I'll try to do those more often uh, in the in the live streams. I think those are a fun, cool way to... I don't know. It's cool. I like it. Hey. Uh, this, this was out here for Emily. I believe, right? Emily... What did you name him? Or her? Or them? Or they? Oh, mint. Mint and moment. That is a good point. She thought it was an alien because it can fly when it's in a UFO. And I think that's a... Yeah, that's a... I mean, I get it. I get where you're going, coming from. Oh, yeah. Jay Parker. Do my hands sweat while I crochet? Yeah. They do, especially if I'm crocheting for like a long period of time. Um, sometimes when I'm doing like my live or my my uh, video recorded patterns, I have to um, I have to like pause in the middle and go like ah wash my hands or something because my hands are just like so sweaty, gross, ew. <laughs> okay, Izzy, thank you so much for joining, Izzy. All right, so we are rocking and rolling. We're making the bottom of our UFO now. And I'm sorry I don't have too much to show you for the for the halftime show. It was a very long week of just... I, I went down south to Southern California to hang out with... Um, well, basically to help my brother out. He is a... Um, he is the, the well-paid house elf that helps put together all the kits. So I wanted to go down, help them with the monthly kits. Since they go out on Monday, I just wanted to give them a little bit of help there. Um, and we needed to figure out like just some details about how stuff is going to work for the website going forward. Um, but yeah, one of my friends is helping out with um, basically like managing work for me because there's just too many projects that I want to do and I just can't just can't do them all by myself Sasha thank you oh Sasha says we need more monsters on screen and you know what you're right let's add another one let's see what do we got oh ooh, ooh. this guy's perfect I don't know what I called these I think I called them like I think I called them like um uh meeples or mibbles or something like that I don't know if you guys can think of a good name. Uh, these would be a really fun pattern to add to the library. They're kind of like little, <laughs> they're kind of like little monkey men, like itty bitty little monkey dudes, furry monkey guys. Um, you can see how it's got a little bit of woggle ins inspiration there too. I like the idea that they walk around like this, like, like, <laughs> and their idea, the idea originally, 
Oh, actually, I have a, I have something written for these. Let me see. One second. I have something written just for um. Creatures of Lenonia. Who's in the grassland? Wickets. Okay, so these are called wickets, and um. Wickets are the most advanced species yet found here on Lenonia. Besides their bipedal waddle-like walk, hence like boop, 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 boop. Um, they also seem to reside in tribe-like families along the bordering edges of the grasslands. Uh, the predatory enriched grasslands act as an impassable sea far too dangerous for a small wicket, even with their family's protection. Even so, once a year, man, I did a great job of writing these. Uh, <laughs> even so, once a year, ones living here along the western border of the Great Plains take a sort of vacation. Thought as a method to keep gen the genetic diversity, tribes of wickets all around the border bordering tr uh, the borders will traverse the dangerous seas of grass once a year to the various sanctuaries, sanctuary oases in the grass biscuit forests. So what they do is they live on a forest of, or they live on the Great Plains of Lenonia, but the Great Plains are, are covered in giant grasses. Let me, I'll put this yarn behind him just so he can stand up a little bit easier. They're covered in giant grass, like it's huge, really, really tall grasses. So it, it's almost like a sea of grass, and there's pred predators that that hide in the in the grasses to to get things. But there's some animals that are just so big that they they can walk over the grass and they don't have to worry about predators as much. One of them is this dude. I don't know if you can see him. Boom. It's called a quoodle. It's a koala and a poodle put together. It's called a quoodle. Uh, and these wickets ride the koodles through the grass so that they don't have to go into the grass and worry about predators. Yeah, it's very Ewoki. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Very Ewoki. Um, yeah. I mean, I've got so many of these little, uh, these fun little ideas for stories. I just realized I was crocheting with the wrong yarn, but that's okay. Let's see if we can fix this. Nice and easy. Boom. I think that should fix it. Um, yeah, it would be a fun, I think it might be a fun pattern to uh, to, to do. I, I really think doing Monster Mondays and starting to get more into doing these like little monster characters with little stories would be really fun. I agree, Stranger Danger. I also love the fuzziness of them. I think that's something that I want to start doing for these crochet kits a little bit more is um, incorporating this really fuzzy yarn because it's it's kind of hard to find, you know, if you don't know where to get it. So I think it'd be a, a good addition to the kits is some more fuzzy, fuzzy yarn. It's harder to get a hold of. So right now, if you're crocheting along with me, uh, you're making the UFO, we I'm working on the bottom of the UFO now in the pattern. I believe it's, uh, if you're on the PDF, I'm on page four. I'm trying to get my mom to help me with PDFs. I want to, I want to write a book with her using, using my PDFs. I want, I just want her to make them look real pretty. Uh, so. I don't know. I don't know why I even mentioned that. I just think it's fun. Okay. One thing I really like about these space patterns is I've really, um, I've really uh, embraced the perfect stripe method, which is a, a method that I came up with to make just like a really clean and, and simple stripe. And you can see it on this UFO's bot, the bottom of this UFO. Once I'm done with this round, you'll see like how crisp of a circle it makes. And I'm just really proud that I, that I went back and I, I don't know. I'm just proud of the, that pattern. I 
think that was the last one there. Oh, we got a new donation. The wicket needs his mount. I understand that, Bill. Hey, Bill, thank you so much for your support. Let's get the Koodle in here. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Will. Or Bill. I guess Will is not wrong, right? <laughs> we'll give him, uh, he needs, he needs, we needs a needle. Keep him in there. There we go. The wicket has his mount. Oh man, he's so big though. Let's, how about we move this one here? I'll put this guy, the wicket there. Oh my gosh, we are surrounded by beasts. I have a story for that little, the antlered forest hibagon too. I don't know if you remember last live stream I showed you the um, the bi-horned beach hibagon, which was uh, kind of looked like that one a little bit, but it's another species of of this kind of character, but looks a little bit different. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so where am I? I am on round three. Cut this white yarn here. I'm gonna have so many of these UFOs. I can't wait. Oh, I don't know if you guys knew, I should have mentioned this in the beginning, but what I'm doing right now is I'm crocheting, the reason I'm crocheting more um, space patterns is because uh, we're making a baby mobile and next week, I think we're gonna put it all together. So we've made uh, a rocket in our first live stream. Or no, wait, I think we did an astronaut first. So we got an astronaut, we did a rocket, we did a, a bunch of stars and moons, and then we did the planet Earth, and now we're making the UFO. And then next week, we're gonna put it all together and make the sun for the center of it. And we're gonna have a really cool baby mobile that I'm going to probably not want to let go of because <laughs> I think it's so cool. I mean, we've spent like four weeks making it now. Yes, yeah, so last week we made the planet Earth, um, which is, I think it's right. Here it is. This is what we made last week for the baby mobile, the planet Earth. So, yeah, we're going to put them all together. They're going to go around. It's going to be cool. I'm really excited about next week's live stream. Really excited. I don't know how I'm going to, like, explain the thumbnail, though. I have to do some, like, I have to do something for the thumbnail of the video to really explain what's going on. Yes, Sarah, the alien is going to go into the ship. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. <laughs> Babies don't need mobiles. I agree. I don't think they need them. Uh, but, you know, it's fun. I want this baby mobile, though. Who needs it? I do's. Yeah, I think, um, I th Claire, I think that something I really want to uh, explore is I want to explore doing some other... Whoa! Wow, how much is that in, oh my gosh. Anne, thank you so much. Anne, Anne just supported for, I don't know what kind of currency that is though. That's the weird thing. <laughs> I think it's um, pesos, Mexican currency. I'm not sure, uh, but 129, that's awesome. It says, I really enjoy your videos. You're an amazing fiber artist. I wish you the best and that your channel keeps growing to a million subs. I mean, me too. <laughs> Thank you so much, Anne. Anna. Okay, so let me put something out for you, Anna. I mean, obviously. Let's see. What do we got? What do we got? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I got a good one. How about this dude? I don't know. Anna, you get to name this. Anna, what is this? What would you call this? I think it's kind of got like some some kind of like a murloc 
kind of like oceany water monster feels to it. Um, I'm just soup. I so how cool is this? I found this this on the beach. Uh, it's like a perfect shell, and it had a hole already in it. And I was like, oh my god, I gotta make something for this shell. So I made this whole little character so that he could wear this shell as a necklace. <laughs> So I need help. I need help naming this. Um, I don't know what to call them. They're kind of like they kind of like mermen or like mer purples or me I don't know something like that. I have a miniature one too somewhere. Let me see. Let me put this. I'll put this guy right here for you, Anne. Anna. We'll keep the moon out right here. This is the best part, is trying to figure out how everybody's going to be able to get... Especially with these giant crocheted creatures. Put them like right there. <laughs> All Bill can say, can call it... See, is Burt Reynolds. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Anna says, Shelly. Shelly. Guppy. Oh, I like I like the idea of guppy. Like, I, playing around... That, it's just a fun word to say. Guppy. Guppel. 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 Hold on, let me show you his... I have a mini one, too. Somewhere in here. Here he is. So I was playing around with the idea of making these uh, characters for Stitched, actually. So here's another one. You can kind of see how it's like... These are the miniature ones, and there's the big ones. A Goople? A Gupplio? Gup, gup, Gupplio. Yeah. Anyhow, I'll leave this one out. Gilbert. <laughs> I like that. Gilbert. Because he's got the gills. Gilbert. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Like kind of like a swamp creature, swamp monster feel. Something like that. Gil Gilbert. Bilgert. Okay, so I think I'm on. Emily for some baby stars. Thank you for your secondary support. Emily wants some baby stars out there. I can give you a perfect baby star. Where's the where's the one we made last week? Here it is. Oh my gosh. Emily, look at how cute this little dude is. I know you were here for this last week, so you remember. But let's keep him out here. Uh, I mean, that's got to be the cutest little baby star I ever did see. I ever did see. It's just got to be the cutest baby star. I'm going to put two out. I'm going to put another one out real quick. Where did I put that? Where did I put that other mini one? Let's put this itty bitty one too. Right here. We're really filling in the background now. Keep this right there. Keep that right there now. Gilbert is awesome. Okay, I'm glad you agree. So, okay, so we got Gilbert is the big boy. And then maybe the little one is named just Guppy. Gup, Gupper. Gup, Gilbert and... Or Shelly. I don't know. We can work with something there. Um, okay, so now I'm making the bottom of our UFO. And I'm making the, the bobbles that go along the bottom of them. Do I have a pattern for this swamp creature? No, I have a pattern for a different kind of swamp creature, though, actually, um, which looks somewhat similar. It's more of a pod person swamp creature, so it looks like um, I made it for Halloween last year, Sunshine. Uh, by the way, hey, Sunshine. Hello, Sunshine. Sunshine was the inspiration for this pattern, actually. So she was the inspiration for making it into a little seat like that. I was all Sunshine's idea, and I need you to give that give that shout out to you, Sunshine, because that was such a cool idea. And I, she sent me an email and was like, "Check this out," and uh, I just think it's such a cool idea. And thank you so much for, um, yeah, thanks for giving me the idea. Uh, this yarn is in between my toes right now, and it hurts. <laughs> Whoa! Another donation. Chirp a little. Tripper Little says there's a distinct lack of burbs on the screen. Well, we can fix that because I'm pretty sure that burbs are aliens. I'm not positive yet, but I'm on. 
I'm doing some research into burbs, and I'm starting to think that maybe they're alien creatures. What do you think? Let's see. Chirp a little. Let's go with the most alien looking one, which is perfect because he can go from the back. The, the, the swan. I think this one looks very alien-like. And of course, it's a burb. <laughs> you know, I... I keep thinking like, oh my gosh, it's not going to be that funny. But it's really so funny when you take the head off. It's just so stupid. <laughs> I love it. So he's going to go right here for you. Look, he's got like kind of a big bird feel to him. Oh, he kind of hides back there. Let's. How about right here? This this looks like maybe he has more room to... Yeah, there we go. This way he can watch us keep tabs for his alien planet. Yeah, I think that is going to be the idea, is a future Stitched character. Um, something that I'm working on is a, uh, a Kickstarter for Stitched uh, where um, to make a really big kit for it uh, so that you can make all the things and it comes with, um, yeah. It's just, I'm working on something really big for Stitched coming up and one of the things that I want to do for that is make some stretch goals for the Kickstarter, where it's like, if we reach this much support, then this happens. If you reach this much support, then that happens. I wasn't supposed to cut that yarn, but I did. Oopsies. Um, but I think one of them, one of the things that would be cool is to do one of the stretch goals to be uh, additional characters for Stitched and one of and these little Mer Guppy Gilbert guys to be one of the bonus creatures. As like a, uh, it's like a bonus pack, you know? Yes, everybody says that the burbs work for the bur burgeoise. I don't know what that is, though. Everybody's been saying that, and I don't know what the burgeoise is. See, I don't know what that is, and I don't know how to pronounce it. Someone help me with the pronunciation of whatever that word is that, that Sarah, or that Sasha put there. How would you crochet a chicken coop? Hmm. That's a good question because I'd want it to be somewhat see-through, right? <laughs> Charlie just goes, whoo! I, you know what? I need to, I really need to work on that macaw pattern, like really bad. Macaw, um, oh man, well here's the, I found the body of the macaw. Where's the head? Oof. Oh, it's the head has fallen all the way over there. I can't really reach it right now. Um, but the macaw and the um, cockatoo, I really, really, really need to finish the pattern for that. I just wanted to finish these space ones first, and then I'm going to try to do those macaw ones right before I come out with the endangered species ones. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just a big undertaking. Bourgeoisie, bourgeoisie, bourgeoisie. Okay, the bourgeoisie, and it means the middle class? No, it means upper class. Okay, so, okay, yeah, that works. Like a secret, is it like, kind of like a secret society? <laughs> the swan is ridiculous in the absolute best way. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> I mean, I agree with you. He is the best in the weirdest way. There we go. It's a French word. Bourgeoisie. This is starting to hurt my finger, I gotta say. I gotta say, but we're almost done with the crocheting part. Oh, I like that, Sarah. That's a great, that's a great tip. Uh, like making the chicken coop look like the cat bus from Totoro. I love the cat bus. I once tried to crochet a cat bus. It did not work out. <laughs> but that was a long time ago, and I'm a lot better at crocheting now than I was then, so maybe I can do it better. Uh, 
Okay, so we got that round done for the UFO. And now, actually, we're done with our white yarn, too, so that's kind of nice. Put that to the side. We're down below. Probably even have enough white yarn for a little, a little project if I wanted to. And we are continuing on. But see how cool that, like, look how nicely circle that very center is. Look at, you can't even, where's the end of that round? I mean, it's right there. But still, pretty impressive, right? Uh, that's what you get with the perfect stripe method. I'm really proud of that. Stranger danger, yes, I did. I cut my finger. I cut my finger trying to cut some wood with an ax. Because I'm a dummy and I was just being stupid. Honestly, that's just the answer. I was just being reckless and dumb and it was a bad idea. And immediately, immediately when I cut my finger, I went, oh no, oh no, what did I do? Oh no. And I was so worried that it was going to be way worse. I mean, it's not good. Like if I took this off, you'd be like, ew. But, um, it's just more for like, oh, I can't do, I, like, I don't want to really want to do a video tutorial with a band-aid on my finger. It doesn't feel good to crochet, which isn't great. I don't know. I don't know. I'm being too hard on myself. It's like, whatever. I'll figure it out. I'll be okay. Oh, that's a great idea. The castle, the castle pattern with a pole for Mario to jump on. I like that. I, will, I need to mess with that castle pattern i need to make that way more often because that castle is so freaking cool um shout out to the original designer of that castle pattern uh uh uh-oh uh-oh i'm forgetting what her name is now um because she stopped making patterns she totally stopped making patterns what is her name i i messaged her the other day There we go. I messaged her the other day and I was like, hey, I want to see if you want to do a pattern. She was like, ah, I'm moving on to different art forms. I'm not really into crocheting anymore. Uh, to doing crochet patterns. She still crochets. Oh, she goes by Ravencraft Designs. That's right. <laughs> She's a very talented crocheter. I hope she gets back into it soon. I should reach out again and just say like, hey, just want to see how you're doing. Yeah, she's very, very talented. Got to take care of the money makers. I agree. At least I didn't cut it off. I know. Can you imagine? Oh, it'd be so terrible. <laughs> I, I would not like to cut my finger off. That would be a, not a fun thing. But honestly, okay, so I think about it all the time. If I don't know why I think about this all the time, but I always think, if I had to lose one of my two limbs, if I had to lose my left or my right arm, which one would I, or my hand, let's go with hand. So if I had to lose my left or my right hand, which one would I want to let go of? I think I'd rather get my right hand cut off. Even though I'm right-handed, I think I'd rather get my right hand cut off than my left. And the reason is because uh, uh, I don't know if I could crochet without my left hand. I don't know because there's so much that goes into this left hand like I'm holding the yarn I'm holding the piece the right hand is mostly just using the crochet hook so if I was if I had to lose an, uh, a limb or a hand I'd rather lose the right one and then I could get a hook a literal crochet hook as a hand <laughs> and I think I could crochet I think I could still crochet without my right hand I don't think I could crochet without my left hand though I think it'd be too difficult Okay, so now we got a slip stitch. Get a long, long end for sewing this together. And then we need to hide this end in. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, Sunshine, uh, I think Charlie's got a really good tip there. Use like a chopstick or a, um, maybe not chopstick, but a, uh, 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 like a, a skewer, you know, like, um, 
this is a cut skewer right here. I also put tape on the end of it, but this is a cut skewer, but like a skewer like this, and then you could even paint it silver um, with just like even a Sharpie. Put it in the top with a little flag on it um, and make it a little Bowser flag. That'd be really fun. That'd be really fun. I should do that. It wouldn't even be that hard to do, I don't think. I don't think. Okay, so we got that part done. Let's pick this one up. And then sew them together. Yeah, I do the same thing, Anna. Just like, well, well, what if I lost a limb? I don't know. It's just fun. Sometimes it's just fun to think about. Um, okay. Let's get these this UFO sewn together. Put these two together like that. Let's go with this stitch right here. Boom. Once I get started sewing it together, it makes it a lot easier. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay. All right. Try to keep that finger straight as I sew everything together. You tried... Uh, <laughs> Anna, you're funny. Anna said that she tried crocheting with her feet, so just in case. Just in case something gets lost. Oh my God, Bill, I saw that too. So uh, Bill just said that an unopened copy of Super Mario Brothers from 1986 just sold at auction for $660,000. Isn't that crazy? Unopened copy of Super Mario. Wild, wild. I have, a, I have an original copy of Super Mario Brothers on the NES in my closet, but it, is, it was opened and it has been played. <laughs> Let's have Super Mario 3. Super Mario 3 is the best one, though. No. That's the best one. <laughs> Sarah, why no stuffing? I will be stuffing it up just a little bit um, when I get to the end of this. But it's a lot easier to sew this together when there's no stuffing in it. And then right before I finish sewing it together, I'll stuff it up a little bit. But you don't want to stuff this up too much because the um, you need the this part to go inverted into the um, into the UFO so that it has a little seat for your little um, uh, alien to sit in. So if you stuff it too much, that doesn't really work out very well. Charlie, am I making a UFO or just the or make an alien we already made the alien it's right here see we did a pink alien because uh it's easter and i don't know i wanted to i wanted to hey logan welcome i haven't seen you in a while how you been happy easter happy easter Easter, Easter, Easter's keister. Do you think rabbits, do you think the Easter bunny poops out eggs? Or do you think, um, maybe he poops out chocolate eggs? Or do you think he just steals eggs from, from chickens? And he just uses those eggs. Maybe he's got a bunch of chickens, like, uh, kind of like how 
you know, Santa's got all his elves. Maybe the Easter Bunny's got the same thing, but with chickens. Just a bunch of slave chickens that he gets to use just to uh, spread those eggs all over the place. But how do they get chocolate then, you know? I don't know. I don't know. There's thought. There, there, there's got to be some kind of situation here. Yeah. That the hang tab was still on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that the... Yeah, the the um, the tag was worth the majority of the money. <laughs> Phil, that's funny. Phil said that he tested the alien's fit, the the top of the alien fit for the the alien itself, and it looked like the alien had a skirt on. That's so funny. Oh, that's a great idea. I like that idea, chirp a little. We'll use this Cadbury egg instead of the alien at first. Hold on, let me finish this up and I'll we'll give that a shot. So obviously we're also coming to the end of the live stream. So quick thank you to everybody that has watched, that has joined the stream today, has joined all these space themed crochet live streams too. Okay, so see how I'm right here at the end? Just a little bit of hole. That's all we need. Just stuff it up. And uh, I don't like to use too much stuffing on this, so. Just a little. Just a wee bit of stuffing. Just a wee bit. Jimbo's meowing at the door. Like, hey, are you done? It's Easter. I want to go on Easter egg hunt. By the way, if you don't know, Jimbo is my cat. So he's not really waiting for an Easter egg hunt. He just wants attention. <laughs> what happened to my finger? I cut it with an axe because I'm a dingus. Because I'm a ding dong. And I thought it would, I thought it'd look really cool with a cool finger scar. So it was all on purpose. <laughs> no, that's not true. It was an accident. I accidentally cut my finger. All right. Horrible crochet accident. Terrible. I fought off a Yancey the Yeti. He just got this terrible bloodthirst out of nowhere. And I was like, what's, what are you doing, Yancey? And he was like, I'm going to cut that finger off. I was like, oh my god. But I calmed him down. It, we're all good now. that and then back in Come out somewhere <laughs> an accident great job Mel 10 out of 10 Yes, I also hope it heals fast. Thank you for your well wishes, though. Well wishes. Wish, I wish I was a well. Okay. Double knot this. And we'll test this out. The blue, this guy, it's called a Kawoodle. It is a mix between a poodle and a koala. He just has RGF, resting grump face. He's not really grumpy. He just looks like. Yeah. Phil, that's tr that's right. That's what happens when you use acrylic yarn. You get you have to use a band-aid. Okay, so the UFO is done. Huh? That looks so like 
perfect. <laughs> I'm really, I'm just really proud of this pattern. Okay, now let's now the moment of truth. We tuck the top of the UFO in. Got to spread out that stuffing on the inside a little bit. And I see I stuffed it just a little too much actually. So it really you really need to be light on the stuffing if you can avoid it. Um, we'll start with this Cadbury egg. It's actually a Reese's egg, but we'll start with that. Oh, it's hard to fit in there. I have to go upside down. <laughs> no, it doesn't fit really. It might fit in the other UFO though. This one because it has a little less stuffing. Yeah, it's not bad. That, that fits. Oh, no, it doesn't. Well, we tried. Let's instead stuff it with our alien. Bloop, 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 bloop. And there we go. Our crocheted alien is Stephanie. There we go. What do you guys think? Do you like it? I'm pretty happy with that. Our unidentified flying bunny. UFB. <laughs> and I like the pink the pink alien too. I think that's fun. If you like this video, you know the deal. Give it a like down below. And guys, thank you so much for joining on this crochet uh, day. And happy Easter, obviously. Um, for all you guys that decided to join me for Easter, thank you. You made my Easter so much better. Uh, I wish I wish you guys the best. Thank you guys all for joining the giveaway too. If you want to crochet this pattern still, um, you can find it right here, clubcrochet.com slash UFO. And uh, yeah, clearly I'm a very big, big fan of this pattern. I think it looks really good. I'm so happy with it. Jane just finished the top half of the UFO. Well, you're almost done. You're you're clearly you're almost there. Next week we're gonna be doing a big live stream where we're putting all of our space themed patterns together. Actually, let's get them all like on screen so you can see all the work we've been doing over these live streams. You can get an idea of like what we're doing next next week. So we're gonna have a bunch of different crocheted stuff in a circle um, that we're going to put uh, in a baby mobile. So we're going to do a UFO. I don't know if we're going to have the alien in the UFO for the baby mobile. We might just have the, the UFO itself. So we'll have the UFO, a rocket ship, our astronaut, put it like this. And I think we're going to have the rocket ship and the astronaut connected by like a string so that he's not just floating in space by himself. I don't know. We'll try something. We'll try some different ideas there. Uh, and then the planet Earth, which I was playing with and I put somewhere. Where did I put that? Mm. Oh, just had it. I had it like five seconds ago. Did I put it behind? I don't know where the planet Earth went, but in between all these little things are going to be crocheted stars and stuff. So we're going to have, we'll probably do the big star like over here. We'll do the moon over there because the Earth will be here. Um, a little tiny star and then our itty bitty star, which is right here. We'll go there. Where did I put the planet Earth? Ugh. Did it fall? No. Attach a cow. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Melville, you're, re you're a mind reader. I don't know where I put that planet Earth because I'm a, just a ding dong. But. Oh, that's so frustrating to me. I mean, it's not, but it is, you know? It's not, but it is. It's like I put something down and then I go, oh. It's not what it is. It's not what it is. Well. Well. Whatever. There's a planet Earth somewhere that I crocheted. And I don't... Oh, it's, oh my god. It was right here. So silly. Okay. So here's all the pieces of our baby mobile. 
We're gonna do a sun in the center that's gonna light up. I've got an idea for it. I don't know if it'll work, but I got an idea. But we got all of our pieces, sun in the center, and we're gonna do a big dowel that's surrounded by black yarn to hold everything up with lights around it. We might be doing this live next week's live stream in a larger location since I need like more space to actually make this. Um, we'll see how it goes. Behind that thing there, yeah, yeah, yeah. New contest, where's the earth? Short contest. <laughs> uh, and if you won that giveaway, I'll send you a thing later uh, after this live stream. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks so much for joining. I'll see you guys next week. Make sure to like, subscribe, all that fun jazz. Um, all right, I guess that's that. I agree with that, Logan. A space level, I think it's just a game would be fun. Yes, location, location, location. Okay, all right, you know how I am. I, I, it's so hard for me to say goodbye. But, pasta la pizza, guys. Happy Easter, I hope you guys have a great day. And I'll see you next week, same time, same place. Pasta la pizza. Charlie, yes, there was a giveaway, but you missed it. You missed it. We'll do another one soon, though. Okay. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. No, you hang up. Mm -mm. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> and yes, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Bye. Congrats to the winners. Okay, bye. Oh, no. My voice is going away. Oh, hey. Oh, oh.